everyone, this is Dennis with Builder Academy from Builder Resources. Welcome to this session. The contractor edition of QuickBooks provides a module to track subcontractor insurance certificates. This section will demonstrate how to set up and use that function. Why is it important to track subcontractor insurance coverages? Because you are responsible. If your subcontractor is not carrying workers' compensation insurance and a worker is injured, that worker, or more specifically that worker's attorney, is going to be looking to your insurance for coverage. If property is damaged on or around the site by the subcontractor and the subcontractor has no insurance coverage, the injured party or the injured party's attorney is going to be holding you as the person responsible for bringing the subcontractor to the job site accountable for the damage. Your insurance coverage requires that all subs who work on your project carry a minimal amount of general liability and workers comp insurance. That means that if you are not requiring the insurance and monitoring the coverage, your insurance company has the option of denying coverage to you for damages caused by your subcontractors. Finally, if you are using the Builder Resources Subcontractor Management System, the Terms and Conditions document requires in-place insurance coverage as a condition of the agreement. The T&C also requires that your company be named as an additional insured on the policy. Frankly, being named as an additional insured has become an issue lately, but at least make certain that your subcontractor has the required insurances in place. We're going to be talking about setting up this process in QuickBooks. The version I'm using is QuickBooks Premier Plus Contractor Edition. All the contractor editions should have approximately the same functionality for monitoring subcontractor insurances. If you're not using a QuickBooks Contractor version, take a look at the vendor section of your version and determine if there is a way to set up an insurance monitoring program such as the one we'll be discussing. Let's get started. Let's make sure that we have the correct vendor types in the vendor type list. Select Lists, select Customer and Vendor Profile Lists, and select Vendor Type Lists. We're going to be adding some vendor types, so select New. Add the new vendor type, and then select OK. The new type appears in the vendor list immediately. One note here, you could simply create a vendor type called Subcontractor. Since we're interested in monitoring subcontractor insurance requirements, that would probably suffice. I chose to track subcontractors by phases, though, thinking that this might have additional utility down the road. For ease of entry, you could just add the type subcontractors now, and if you needed to later, come back into this drop-down to add the individual contractor types, framer, electrician, drywaller, and so on. Adding just subcontractors will also make it easier to create the report we're going to produce later in this exercise. Just in case you decide to add the individual vendor types, here's another example. Add the vendor type, select OK, and you can see that it's added to the list. Once you've finished adding vendor types, click on the vendor's icon to access the vendor database. Select any subcontractor and select additional information to open the window we need. Note that the fields for expiration are already available. Select Define Fields to add the custom fields we will need. The new fields will be added by you in the pop-up window that's displayed. When the fields are added, be sure to click in the Vend column to activate that field. You can tell that it's activated if there's a check mark in the column next to the field label. The seven fields you will want to add include General Liability Company, General Liability Policy Number, General Liability Limits, Worker Comp Company, Workers Comp Policy Number, Workers Comp Limits, and T&C Renewal Date. Once you've entered these seven labels and confirm that each is checked in the VEN column, select OK. The new fields show up now in the additional info screen. Note that in the example shown, the insurance expiration dates are passed. We'll see the effect of that in the next slide. 
When the insurance expiration dates are passed, every time you try to transact with the subcontractor, you will receive this warning message and a suggestion to contact the sub to update the insurance coverage information. You should not let the situation get to the point where you are seeing this warning, but if you do, immediately contact the subcontractor for the information required. Next in this session, you'll be building a report you can use to stay on top of the insurance expirations proactively. Enter the information for each subcontractor, that's the insurance expiration dates, and the information regarding the policies. The information regarding insurance coverages should be available on the insurance certificates currently on file in your office. If you do not have an insurance certificate on file for a subcontractor, contact them immediately and request an update. The information for the Terms and Conditions renewal date will be available on the Terms and Conditions document if you are using the subcontractor management system. Just look at the date of the last document and set the renewal date for 12 months in the future. Now that you have the information entered for your subcontractors, let's create a report which will help to monitor the insurance coverages. The basis for this new report is going to be the vendor contact list. To get there, select Reports, and then Vendors and Payables, and then Vendor Contact List. Once you have the vendor contact list showing, select Customize the Report. Select Display. Select the fields shown to have the report show the information in which you're interested. If a field is not on the list but is checked in the default report, uncheck it. This list is the information that you're going to want to have on the new report. You can pause the video while you go through this selection process. Next, select Filters to limit the vendor names displayed on the report to just subcontractors. Select Vendor Type as the filter for this report and then multiple vendor types to move to the next screen. On this screen, select Manual and then check off all subcontractor vendor types. Again, you can pause the video as you go through this process. Once you have selected all the subcontractor vendor types, including the catch-all type subcontractor, click on OK. Here is the report that was generated from the information selected. The nice thing about this report is that it shows which information regarding your subcontractors is missing. You can see which workers' comp information is missing, which general liability expiration dates are needed, which terms and conditions are needing renewal, and which company email addresses are missing. You can print this report once a month and flag any upcoming renewal dates. Then, just email the subcontractor to let her know that you need an updated insurance certificate. This alerts the sub that you are tracking the information and expect their cooperation. You can also print this report when the insurance company does their annual audit of your insurance coverages. It will show the insurance company that you are serious about meeting your insurance requirements and maintaining your coverage. Name the new report as shown. Save in the Memorized Report group under Vendors. Check that the report is where it should be by going to Reports, Memorized Reports, Vendors, and then you should see the name of the new report, Vendor List Insurance Monitor. Risk management is part of your overall management responsibilities. You manage this type of risk just like you manage all the other risks of being in business. You either assume the risk, self-insure, or transfer the risk. For most of us, general liability and workers' compensation risks are too big to self-insure. As the general contractor on a project, it is up to you to avoid self-insuring these risks and to protect your buyer and yourself by making certain that all of the subcontractors are carrying the appropriate insurances in the appropriate amounts. With general liability insurance, and most especially with workers' compensation insurance, it doesn't matter until it matters, and then it matters a lot. QuickBooks makes it easy to monitor subcontractor insurance coverages. It just takes a little bit of discipline on your part.